Well, hello, all my fishy friends, and welcome back to another Safe Fishy Adventure. Today, I'm taking you guys along to do one of my absolute favorite late summer pastimes. We're in the mountains, the weather is perfect, and the stage is set for an amazing adventure. And nevertheless, we're rocking boots and shorts, boots and shorts, boots and shorts. It is absolutely perfect this evening, guys. So we got our bucket, we got our Lamborghinis. Let the adventure begin. So in the spirit of nonsense, I wanna start this video off with a little bit of trivia. I wanna see how many of you fishy fans out there know what we're gonna do right now. There's a particularly delicious treat that grows in the woods this time of year. And if that didn't just totally give it away, we'll just go ahead and show you. That's right, it's huckleberry time, baby. For those of you that don't know what a huckleberry is, it's a high mountain fruit that grows wild in the Northwest and all over the Rocky Mountains. Any, any high altitude mountains, we usually have them. I'm not sure if it's all around the world, but in particular, in the Cascade Mountain Range, you get up about three, 4,000 feet elevation and you'll start to find these delicious little treats. There's two different berries that we're looking at here today. This one here, you can tell by the pointy leaves, they're kind of waxy in color. And the color of the berries is that deep, dark purple. Those are huckleberries. Just to the left, we have blueberries. You can see the tips are rounded and the berries are a completely different color. They're actually blue. So the ones we want to focus on today are the huckleberries because they have some really cool recipes in store for this episode. Plus some more adventure that's going to continue after we pick here. We got to somehow find a camp tonight before it gets dark after picking these berries and uh, who knows what tomorrow holds. So without further ado, let's get to picking. And so the work begins. The real trouble is try not to eat them all while you pick them. That can be the hardest part of huckleberry picking. Other than the hiking, other than finding the good patches, trying to actually throw these things in a bucket and take them home is painful at times. Oh my goodness. The mother load bush. The mother bush. She provides. One thing I must say about picking berries or really foraging for any natural edible it's just the peacefulness of the whole situation. A lot of times when you're out here in the woods, you're just on, you have a mission or you're trying to hike somewhere. You're, if you're hunting, you're trying to find animals and you're focused the whole time. But when you take a step back and you sit and just pick in one spot for a period of time, it really helps you just soak in the peacefulness of mother nature and just how beautiful it really is out here. Ooh, what do we have here? Another tasty forest treat. Now these, everybody, are wild raspberries. And I actually picked a few of these in a couple episodes back uh, where we were doing a tiny island survival challenge. But these ones are much bigger, much juicier, mm, and much tastier. These are gonna go very well in our dish. Well, for the amount of time we were out here, we didn't get the biggest haul, but we got plenty enough for what we need to do tonight. It's starting to get a little bit dark. Let's get the hell out of here. Well, everyone, kind of a creepy find on the way back to the truck. After it was all said and done, we probably made it about a mile or so up here, and uh, look what we walked past. Kill site. It's pretty funny here, you look, there's poop all over the place. I'm guessing it was probably a mountain lion, a cougar of some sort. And uh, he must have killed this, it looks like a young elk, a little calf elk. And then uh, sat right here on this nice log, or stump rather, and enjoyed his meal. And uh, we just kept pooping it out the side. A little spooky. Good thing we're almost back to the truck. Be the most stressful, painful, 
and ultimately frustrating parts of doing this, what we'll call freelance truck camping at times, especially when you have a high taste like myself where I really want a spot with a view. So we spent about the last hour driving in circles, running into dead ends, trying to find a spot with a beautiful view for you guys to, to build camp and cook this little dinner that we're gonna do. And it's just not happening right now. So we probably have about another 15 minutes of daylight. It's been getting dark about eight o'clock lately and it's 7.41 right now. So we're really running out of time. So hopefully here in the next few minutes we can find some of the view set up a camp and get to eat because I'm starving. Well, speak of the devil. Welcome home. This will do. Well, tonight, everybody, we're going to eat like mountain climbers, nice and light. And in honor of my special lady friend, we're going to do a health. And what I mean by that is we're bringing back the shark coochie board. And what I mean by shark coochie board and bringing it back is if you guys haven't been following along on this channel, Stay Fishy, I did an episode at my special lady friend's house where I caught a fish from the couch. And I did an amazing shark coochie board on that episode. So if you haven't seen it before, check it out in the link in the description and go watch that video. But this time, we're doing it a little bit different. We're doing it mountaintop style. So we have some fine ingredients. One fine one in particular. Well deserved. For our protein on our shark coochie board here tonight, we're doing some beautiful, beautiful smoked salmon. There we go. I'm gonna take my knife and chop this up into some nice cracker sized pieces, bones and all. Makes it kind of a fun game having to pick those bones out with every bite. Builds character. Next, have a few olives. I don't have the fancy dishes up here on the mountain this time, like I did in the last video, but you guys get the hint. Mm. Next, the pickles. Mm. Oh, that's a good pickle. Can't forget about our ghost green pepper jelly. It's gonna go very nicely. My favorite cheese of all, vintage aged cheddar. Also in honor of my special lady friend, cause she's vintage. And I must say, everybody, something that makes me very happy to disclose on this episode it feels like fall i love fall and i love spring summer's cool i just hate being hot this is the perfect clothes for me sweatshirt pants chacos shark coochie board out here in mother nature after a fun day hiking but it is so nice to wake up in the morning smell that fresh air see those leaves starting to fall off the trees and with every single day it gets closer and closer to fall and i cannot wait you guys might think this is weird we're gonna do one big scoop of Greek yogurt. That's gonna go really nice on the cracker. Now for a variety of crackers, I think is a must with a shark coochie board. You really can't rely on just one flavor of cracker. It'll really kill your board. It'll kill the pizzazz. So we got our La, La Panzanella. There we go. Jesus, Jordan. And then my favorite of all, the fig and pumpkin seed crackers. These things are absolutely delicious. I don't know the brand name, I threw the box away. But if you guys can find these things, they are a treat in themselves. And they go amazing with a shark coochie board. Oh my God, I almost forgot the best part. The whole reason that we're here. Let me get myself a nice little vessel here. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so awesome. Now this Greek yogurt with these fresh wild berries, a little piece of salmon. I'm gonna throw you guys off. I'm gonna freak you out and put a pickle on there too. It's happening. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go with the smorgasbord right off the bat. Going full piece of cheese, Greek yogurt, huckleberries, and raspberries. You said I wouldn't do it, but I did. We're gonna go a pickle and a chunk of this beautiful salmon. Let's give it a shot.
Now that's where it's at. What a healthy, delicious, and meaningful snack. Caught the fish, picked the berries, bought everything else, but still tastes good. For my next victim, of course, we're going to the smorgasbord. A couple berries, smash them down there. Man, that bland, almost tart flavor from that uh, Greek yogurt and that sweet burst from these little berries is a really, really cool combo. This one here, I'm not gonna go quite as crazy. I'm gonna go with that piece of cheese, but this time we're gonna add a little spice, a little wang, if you will. I'm not gonna go very much on that because that stuff's hot. And a chunk of fish. Look at how beautiful that is. Beautiful meal, beautiful view. That's the best combo yet. Oh, we can't leave little out. What do you want? You want some Greek yogurt, bud? Okay, no berries for you though. That might hurt your tummy. Little ch-ch-ch cheese. Little salmon. Oh yeah. You gotta put it on the board for you. There you go, buddy. There you go. Not a fan of the cracker, eh? Camp. Night, everyone. Well, good morning, everybody. It was a great night's sleep last night. It was probably a good 50 degrees all night long. A little bit of a breeze, but I kept that fresh air rolling through the the bum camp bed, and uh, woke up to a little bit of sunshine. And a little bit of wind. It's a little chilly up here though, so I think we're gonna pack up, head down the hill to our next adventure, and cook breakfast down there. So this breakfast is gonna be amazing. One of my favorites. Took my family away from my Carolina home. And dreams about the West and started to roll. Six long months on a dust covered train. Ah, much better. Made it down off the mountain into this valley. We've got some taller trees around us, so there's no wind. It's nice and warm down in here. Let's cook some breakfast. these things. Comment below with what your favorite wild berry is, everyone. My very favorite is huckleberries, hands down. Those raspberries are actually really good. I'm not a big raspberry fan any other time, but these wild ones have a totally different flavor. A little more sour in a way, which I kind of enjoy. But on the menu today, wild huckleberry pancakes, everyone. We need one more packet. You guys ever have a three packet morning? I sure have. That's more like it. You can stand a spoon up in it. That eh, maybe not. Mmm. Good cup of joe. Now for our pancakes. There's a few other different pancake mixes that I like a lot, um, but I didn't have at the house, so we're going with the generic Kirkland. Buttermilk pancake mix. I'm gonna go about, oh, probably two cups. There's two big boys here. Okay, I'm gonna go an egg. Calls for milk, but we're gonna use some of that stuff instead. Greek yogurt. Splash of water. And because we don't have any soda water, we're gonna go splash a white claw in there for bubbles. Right, mix her up. White claw. And 
consistency is nice. Pour well. Yum. Yum. Mmm. I love cake batter. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have noticed I haven't put the berries in yet because I'm going to do that after I lay my batter into the pan. That way I can evenly disperse the berries into that pancake. And we're just going to make one big one here. All right. The rest is for me to lick. That was my favorite part growing up when my mom made a cake. She'd take the rubber scraper, scrape out all the stuff, and then I got to lick the pan. Good old fashioned pot liquor. Mmm. Mmm. Berry time. So you can see what I mean now. This way it doesn't get mixed up in the batter, you know, get the big clumps of berries. So I'm gonna just evenly disperse. Kind of dropping them all in through here. And a little bit goes a long way. Because these things are gonna kind of melt apart. Okay, the hardest part of pancake cooking, the flip. Oh, almost, okay. Not all hope is lost. Need a little more momentum on the flip. I did it! <laughs> Sick! Let's get some thumbs up for that one, you guys. Thumbs up this video just for that pancake flip. Epic no handle flip. Oh, yum. You can see already how fluffy this thing is getting, how thick it's getting. That's because I put that soda water in there or white claw one of the two but it really adds a nice amount of volume to the batter makes it puff up like that and you don't get that really flat kind of greasy flapjack effect by doing that so it worked out good how are we looking still a little undercooked now flip that again add a little lid that center is still a little doughy i like a doughy pancake but not that doughy she's perfect Man, I'm proud of myself there. That is a perfect freaking pancake. Look at how fluffy and doughy it is. Yeah. Mmm. It's like cake. Don't even need syrup. I'm not a big syrup guy anyways on pancakes. Even anything I like to dip. But with these berries, it's so sweet. And they have such a, a large flavor that... Mmm. Really don't even need it. Mmm. Mmm. They're so good heated up too. Kind of amplifies the flavor. Mmm. Wow. Fishing time. Addicted Bobber Trout Series Micro Worm here. And if you guys remember from the last 36 hour island survival challenge, these little trout worms are absolutely killer up in this high mountain stuff. So I'm going with a freshie. I'm going to put a fresh worm on. I'm going to stick with the pink because I feel like this one works probably the best up here. Pink Micro Worm. I'm not really sure what to expect in this creek. <clears throat> I'm guessing there's probably gonna be some like West Slope cutthroat or maybe some little brook, brook trout in here. But uh, we don't know until we find out. See what it has. Ooh, okay, here we go. We have this beautiful little pocket out in front of me. A log's kind of really messing it up, but I see some really nice deep water. I can't even see the bottom in there, so let's do the old flip cast, see if we can get one. That was a fish for sure. That was a fish for sure. Did you guys see that bobber down? That was epic. Epic bobber down. EBDs. EBDs all day. Right in the very back of the hole there. 
Oh, there you go. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh, damn it, I had him. I had him. Ah, oh. oh, he nailed it. And that was probably the best cast I made so far. Damn it, let's see if we can get it back in there. Oh, oh, no, rejected. Dang it. Well, lost that one. I'm pretty sure he felt the hook, so I don't know if we're gonna get him to bite again. We might have to go look for another hole, but, but first, let's try the worm one more time. Nothing in hole number two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last hole of the day. Can we make it happen? Last hole magic, come on. Come on. Uh, I must say, this is damn near some of my favorite kind of fishing, fishing these small creeks like this. And it's not for the size of the fish, it's more for the atmosphere and for the technicality of the fishing. Having to make these casts with these bobbers and these spinners and get them into these tight little areas like this is seriously some of the most fun you can have fishing. So if you haven't done it, if you've never gone and fished small mountain creeks, definitely give it a try. It is very entertaining. What was that? That was very bitey. Over there on this inside line. Well, everybody, no fish on this episode, but I have to say it was an awfully fun one, and I want to see your comments below on what you thought of this foraging video. I love camping in the mountains, especially when it's just getting into fall like this. We're running out of time to be able to stay up there in the back of the truck and be comfortable all night. So let's see some more comments below on the videos you guys want to see coming up. We've been doing our best to read through all the comments and do whatever you guys are asking us to do because this channel's for you guys, and we want you to enjoy watching these videos. So until next week, same time, same place, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.